Don't move it around. How about that? Yeah. 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 Okay, I am. We'll leave it in my pocket. I am one of those people who can move around a lot, so I will. I will. I'm Mark Gibson. Uh, I'm coming to Calvary Chapel almost two years now. And uh, I'm a pastor. I serve in the prisons and fill in for other pastors all around. I tell people I'm a pastor at the Calvary Gospel, the school gospel. I age a young boy. All right. I like to Well, as you hear in Dan, they disobeyed pretty much from the very beginning when they were given this land, this territory by God. They refused to kick the Philistines out. So they just going to move up to some place in Little Lakes. It was unwalled, the people were there. As you saw the headwaters to the rivers here in Israel, water is life. So they came in, they took over, and they started right here. Um, and as things went on, you know, Israel was always disobeying. We just heard that uh, the, you know, when the, the Israel and Judah split, Jeroboam, who was actually one of the one of the, I guess you'd say, servant leaders for Solomon was um, told by Ahijah, the prophet, that he would get ten of the tribes, but he wasn't going to take all the way from, from the family of David. So Judah was down there, and I want to read one of the things that was told to me, because if you look at um, this kind of like a verse. Uh, if you go to chapter 11, verse 37, I'm going to start at what book? Oh, I'm sorry, First Kings. That would, that would be it. Just pick one in the Bible. We'll figure it out. Chapter what? First Kings, chapter 11. I didn't want to read a whole lot. Actually, if you start at 29, you can find out where Jeroboam was, was um, told to be. He'll be king. But I want to start at 37 so we don't get into too much time. And uh, this is the prophet speaking to God. He says, and I will place you on the throne of Israel, and you will rule over 
uh, that your heart desires. If you listen to what I tell you and follow my ways and do whatever I consider to be right, and if you obey my decrees and commands as my servant, David said, that I will always be with you. I will establish an enduring dynasty for you as I did for David, and I will give Israel to you. Because of Solomon's sin, I will punish the descendants of David, though not forever. All right, that, doesn't that sound kind of like the command that was given, given right from the beginning? If you obey me, if you listen to me, then, promises of God, if then, if then. Well, Jeroboam, he came in, you know, and uh, three of them, he was, he was messing up. Nobody wants to say that's where they split. He come on up as well. Lo and behold, the, the, the devil will start speaking to you in so many ways. And I, and I call this worshiping a culture of convenience and compromise. Because that's what it became. This place right here became an easy place to worship. It became a, a, a convenient place to worship. And so often, even in our days now, isn't that what happens? People say, oh, well, I, I, I can worship God from my own living room. Right? Well, I can turn on the TV. Well, I, I can get everything I need, need to get off. Or I get out of this nature. This is God's sanctuary. <laughs> but they don't want to get it off. See, being a Christian, as you know, is, is the easiest thing in the world because the price has already been paid. Lord did this for us, and all we have to do is accept that gift. But being a Christian is the hardest thing you'll ever do for your life. Because the world, the devil, is running around like a roaring devil is seeking to destroy us. And as soon as you say yes to Jesus, you get this big bull's eye on you. And then he's going to be coming at you every way he can. You may not be able to take your salvation if you've truly given your heart to him, but he will try to knock him down every day. Notice the devil always use the, the places where the greatest influence for the negative feedback to society will happen. But here is with the king. Let's go to chapter 12. The second first Kings chapter 12. Now let's just start at verse 31. <coughs> I'm sorry. I have circles around my verses and I'll start from the top. Alright, it says, Jeroboam then built up the city of Shechem, which became the capital of Israel, in the hill country of Ephraim, and became and it became his capital. Later he went on and built up the town of Canaan. Jeroboam thought to himself, unless I am careful, the kingdom will return to the dynasty of David. When these people go to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices at the temple of the Lord, they will again give their allegiance to King Rehoboam of Judea. They will kill him and make him their king instead. So, on the advice of his council, get, get these people around us and tell you that's what happened with, the, with, with Judah crowing. This is the end But on the advice of his council, the king of Judea goes down. And he says to the people, it is too much trouble for you to worship in Jerusalem. Look, Israel, these are the gods who brought you out of Egypt. Doesn't that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. Wow. While Moses was up on the mountain, the same thing as this. So we placed these calf idols in Bethel and in Dan, and either end of the kingdom. And this became a great sin for the people to worship the idols. <laughs> Traveling as far north as Dan to worship the one of them. Jeroboam also erected buildings of the pagan shrines and ordained priests for the common people. They were the same priests. Those who were not the priests were trial of evil. And Jeroboam instituted a religious festival in Bethel, held on the 15th day of the 8th month, in imitation of the annual festival of the shelters in Jericho. There at Bethel, he, offered, he himself offered sacrifices to the cows. He had made and he appointed priests for the pagan shrines he had made. Wow. In his heart, Jeroboam, the 
Jeroboam is also he's listed as uh, uh, the, the king who is uh, Satan's minion, you might say. You can read three kings, and there is at least 13 other kings that ruled after him that were influenced by his debauchery and his going off the way. Everybody knows Ahab. Everybody knows Ahab, the Arab, that's all right. But Ahab is one of those ones we hear about. He's part of the one that did the same as his father, Jeroboam, up to there. <clears throat> um, the problem is, to see, is by providing an alternative place of worship, Jeroboam appealed to the laziness of the people. We, by nature, want what we want. So nothing was changed. And he works on us. That's why it's such a blessing to the church is Bible believing, mm -hmm. Bible teaching, will not compromise the word of God. Mm -hmm. And that's your blessing as well. Mm -hmm. You know, sin always provides a substitute that seems to be more convenient and more attractive mm -hmm. to the true worship God wants us to do. And that's the way the devil works. I remember that commercial, Old Milwaukee Beer. It doesn't get any better than this. You know, you see these people all joining in together, having a good time around the camp of you all. It doesn't get any better than that because we've already been sent. That's the way it is with sin. It's good and very intense, but man, you're getting what you, the devil <coughs> considers the best and it goes down. So just remember that, you know, the greatest sin that is in the Bible, it's, it's, it's not. Um, Blind, it's not adultery. The greatest sin that you've got is actually going to cross by the world. As you know, Troy was prison and preaching on doctrine. When you start changing the word of God, making it accommodate what you want it to do, then at that point, the world is going to start working and working and working. You're going to be going down here all the way. So that's why this right here is a good thing. As a second, this is your God. You don't have to go down Look how beautiful it is, and you can have fun. And they did that up until the time God removed <laughs> and let the Assyrians take the scripture off that. Real quick one. Second Kings 17. Jeroboam drove Israel away from following the Lord and made them commit the great sin. The Israelis practiced all the sins that Jeroboam had practiced and never wavered from them until the Lord removed Israel from his presence. Just as he had warned through all of his prophets who served him, they knew, they were told, they gave, were given chances. So Israel was carried off into exile from their own land into Assyria where they remained. Understand sin has its consequences. Compromise has its, con com has its consequences. The devil will lie to you. He's good at it. But understand the Lord never will. Stay in his word. Know what it says. And then live by it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> is still here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything of this is still here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he referenced um, the 
golden calf in the wilderness wanderings. Let me just read to you. Um, it's in Exodus 32. Uh, Moses is on the mountain. Aaron is making out the golden calf that he later says it just popped out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the worst liar in the history of the world. <laughs> 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 Verse 4 says, And he received the gold from their hand and fashioned it with an engraving tool and made a molded calf. Then said, What? This, this is, is your God. God. Jeroboam comes up here and he, they're worshiping. And the golden calf has a name, though, if you will. It's called Yahweh. So it wasn't that they were saying, We're done with Yahweh, but they were wanting to just put a new face on Yahweh, a graven image, which is forbidden, right? But here's a little piece about um, Jeroboam. Jeroboam and Solomon had a fallout. And uh, Jeroboam's life was being threatened by Solomon. Where did he flee to? He fled to Egypt. So if you're thinking, how in the world would he get the idea of a golden calf? We fled to Egypt. When Solomon died, came back, talked to Rehoboam, Solomon's son. If we can get along, we'll get along. And Rehoboam said, you think my dad was bad? Wait till you encounter me. And he's like, we're out of here. And so but they made their way up here. It became, as Mark said, convenient to worship here. But it was very political too. Because if the children of Israel went down to Jerusalem to worship, where would their heart possibly be aligned? To which kingdom? The one in the south. So it was idolatry. This is called a high place, right? We saw the high place of the ghetto. This is called a high place. And so they would come and they'd worship at these spots. So, you know, it's this scene to me, as Mark so, I mean, I like that time. At the altar of convenience and love. That's a great way to remember this. Sorry. And uh, we do this. You know, we, you know, this is the Lord. And then we, but we put it some other label. You know, we do something and we put the label of the Lord on it. And we just have to really go back to the Word of God and say, what does it say? Thanks. Great job. Great job.